Chicago, a vibrant city known for its architectural beauty, rich history, and deep-rooted musical influences, has another grimmer reputation, its notorious crime rates. Over the years, various gangs have risen and fallen, but none quite as dire as the Goonie Boss. At first, emerging as a music-focused group, they symbolized hope and unity in their local community. Yet, as darkness often overshadows light, the group's path took an ominous turn. Their shift from beats to bullets marked a chilling chapter in Chicago's crime annals. Introducing a man named O-Dog to the group changed its course and unleashed a reign of terror that Chicago hadn't witnessed in years. This story delves into the meteoric rise and fall of the Goonie Boss, especially the Chirac hitman O-Dog, who sent shockwaves through the streets of the Windy City. Chicago's Goonie Boss didn't always have the reputation they're infamous for today. In their early days, the group bonded by a shared love for music. Their members often gathered on street corners in community centers or someone's living room, turning jam sessions into full-fledged musical gatherings. The beats echoed with hopes of a brighter future, while their lyrics told stories of community unity and the struggles they hoped to overcome. But as time passed, the ever-present attraction to power and influence began to creep into the group's dynamics. While their music had always been a central theme, certain members saw opportunities beyond the beats. External pressures, territorial disputes, and the promise of easy money began to turn their musical passion into something much darker. This shift took time. At first, there were minor brushes with local law enforcement, but nothing that sounded too many alarms. As members saw the potential gains from illicit activities, however, their priorities shifted. Once at the forefront of the group's mission, music started taking a back seat. The Goonie Boss slowly transformed from a group that once found unity in music to one that became a symbol of fear in the streets of Chicago. Their descent into the criminal underworld was gradual, but by the time the transformation was complete, the Goonie Boss had left their musical roots far behind. In the intricate web of Chicago's street life, the name O-Dog rang with both appeal and dread. He wasn't just another member of the Goonie Boss, he was a force that would come to define the gang's darkest chapters. With a magnetic personality, O-Dog drew people towards him with ease. He had the gift of the gab, a natural way that could make you trust him, fear him, or both simultaneously. However, beneath that charming exterior lurked a soul marinated in violence and unpredictability. The Goonie Boss were already well into their criminal evolution when O-Dog entered the scene. They had their reputation, their territory, and their enemies. However, O-Dog brought an intensity that would turn the group from a local menace to a citywide terror. His decision-making was as swift as it was merciless. There were no council meetings or group consensus. When O-Dog made a decision, it was final. Where once the Goonie Boss were selective in their acts of violence, O-Dog's arrival marked an era of terror. No one was safe. The distinction was blurry at best. Rivals, bystanders, and sometimes even his own. To him, power wasn't just about control, but about instilling fear. He wanted his name to be whispered in every corner of Chicago. A boogeyman not of myth, but of haunting reality. O-Dog's brutality wasn't impulsive, but calculated. Each act of violence, each life taken, was a message not just to his enemies, but to his own ranks. He didn't request loyalty, he demanded it. Fear became the glue holding the Goonie Boss together, with O-Dog as the puppet master pulling the strings. The streets that once echoed with the hopeful rhythms of the Goonie Boss's music now resonated with the sounds of sirens and gunfire. O-Dog didn't just change the gang, he turned them into something the streets of Chicago hadn't seen before. Every pull of the trigger, every life lost, added another layer to the legend of O-Dog. A legend not of heroism, but of darkness so profound it turned the Goonie Boss into a symbol of terror. As the Goonie Boss's reputation grew, so did O-Dog's. He was more than a gang member. He embodied the anarchy, power, and unpredictability that the Goonie Boss had come to represent. Under his reign, the gang didn't just operate in the shadows, they became the shadows, darkening the streets of Chicago with a terror that would linger for years to come. Englewood, a neighborhood nestled within the confines of Chicago, has unfortunately become synonymous with crime and poverty. Yet it wasn't always this way. Englewood has a history rooted in community and vibrant cultural expressions. Still, over the years, it has become a battlefield where young souls are caught in the crossfire of violence and desperation. Once lively and buzzing with the harmonious chaos of city life, the streets are now often silent, with residents wary of the dangers that lurk in the shadows. Englewood's fall from grace is not a singular story. It's a complicated weave of socioeconomic neglect, political indifference, and an influx of firearms that are as easy to get hold of as candy in a store. Public schools, underfunded and overcrowded, need help to provide quality education. The system often ignores many young people in Englewood because they lack resources. 
The playgrounds, parks, and recreational centers meant to be safe havens for children and families often serve as territories marked by various gangs, each claiming their dominion. The job market in Englewood is as sparse as green spaces, with unemployment rates soaring above the national average. For the youth, the lack of job opportunities and constructive engagement has made the allure of gangs and the underground economy an almost unavoidable path. It's not just about the promise of money, but also a sense of belonging and power, elements starkly missing from their everyday lives. Amidst this backdrop, gangs like the Goonie Boss didn't just rise, they flourished. Englewood provided a fertile ground where the seeds of crime, rooted in desperation and neglect, sprouted into organizations wielding power and instilling fear. The alleys, street corners, and abandoned buildings became both a refuge and a battleground for the Goonie Boss and their ilk. The drugs and gun culture isn't an anomaly. It's a natural offspring of years of systemic failures. The Goonie Boss, armed and dangerous, were as much a product of their environment as they contributed to its decay. Every gunshot, every crime committed, is not just a reflection of the gang's power, but also a painful reminder of Englewood's unattended wounds. The narrative of Englewood is intricate, a mix of neglect and resilience, fear and hope. Each story of violence and crime is also a call to attention, a plea for intervention, not just in the lives of those caught in the gang culture, but in the very fabric of a community that, despite its challenges, holds the potential for renewal and transformation. In understanding the Goonie Boss, one must also peer deeply into the scars and untapped potentials of Englewood, a neighborhood yearning for a narrative shift. Englewood's bloody tapestry is woven with intricate patterns of gang rivalries and alliances. Amidst this volatile mix, the Goonie Boss carved out their notorious niche. Their rise to power wasn't isolated, but influenced, shaped, and at times hindered by the presence of other formidable gangs, like the Black Disciples and Gangster Disciples. Englewood wasn't just a neighborhood, it was a battleground where territories were marked not by street signs, but by the invisible and often bloody lines drawn by these gangs. The Goonie Boss, led by the infamous O-Dog, had a particularly tumultuous relationship with the Black Disciples. Every street corner, every block was a potential spark that could ignite the volatile mix of young, angry men with guns, deep-seated grudges, and territorial loyalties. It was a world where respect was earned not through deeds but by the barrel of a gun, and O-Dog was a master of this deadly game. In one haunting incident, the brutal murder of a 16-year-old boy named Travis, a member of the Black Disciples by the Goonie Boss, highlighted the vicious cycle of violence that plagued Englewood. Travis wasn't just a casualty. He was a message, a terrifying reminder of the Goonie Boss's power and brutality. His death fueled the ever-present fire of hatred and revenge that consumed the hearts of many young men in Englewood. Yet it wasn't just about rivalries. There were alliances, too, formed out of necessity, mutual enemies, or the sheer need to survive in the dog-eat-dog -dog world of Englewood streets. The Goonie Boss had uneasy alliances, marked by mutual suspicions and temporary truces. In this world, today's ally could be tomorrow's enemy. One such alliance saw the Goonie Boss and Gangster Disciples momentarily put aside their differences to face a common enemy. It was a partnership of convenience, devoid of trust, but fueled by mutual interests. Yet, these alliances were as fragile as they were dangerous, a thin veil of cooperation that could shatter at the slightest provocation, plunging the gangs back into the familiar territories of violence and revenge. Gerald Sears' death was the climax of Odog's lawless ways, a soul taken in error, a life snuffed out not by targeted evil, but sheer recklessness. For Odog, the streets of Chicago were a chessboard, and every resident a pawn in his deadly game, precision and strategy, sacrificed for power and fear. Yet Gerald was not a nameless statistic. His death was a glaring reminder of Odog's terrible nature, sending shudders down the city's spine and echoing scarily within Goonie Boss itself. Gerald's death was a bitter pill for the Vaughn brothers, Alvin and Alex, a stark realization of the chaos they were now unwilling members of. Each bullet O-Dog fired didn't just take a life, it chipped away at the brothers' souls, their hearts heavy with the burden of each fallen body. Their gang, once unified, was now a prison of fear and violence, with O-Dog, the warden, his trigger finger ever itchy, ever ready. O-Dog's terror wasn't just external, it seeped into the very bones of the Goonie Boss, a persistent echo of dread that never quite silenced. The Vaughns found themselves staring into a deep hole of dread and out-of-control violence. Gerald's untimely end was more than a tragedy. It was evidence of the monster amongst them and their powerlessness against it. In this moment of clarity, amidst the echoes of gunfire and the haunting shade of death, the Vaughn brothers questioned their allegiance to the Goonie Boss and O-Dog. 
they were no longer blind soldiers but witnesses to a horrible transformation. Forced to reckon with the monster they'd fed and the desperate need to break the chains binding them to a path spiraling into darkness. Odog's cruel nature became clear when he started a terrifying spree that went beyond the usual limits of gang violence. He saw family connections as worthless, just like the short-term alliances in the violent world of Chicago streets. A cousin, Goldie, was pulled into this scary game of power and danger without choosing to be. Goldie, who grew up in the quiet town of Streeter, knew nothing about the constant violence and surprise attacks of Englewood. Odog took advantage of this, drawing Goldie into the Goonie boss's evil circle. Goldie's quiet hometown became a source for the guns that would cause so much bloodshed on the streets of Chicago. But in the summer of 2016, things took a dark turn. Odog was out of money and set his manipulative eyes on Goldie again. This time, he pulled him into a bold theft in Streeter. The success of this crime planted a seed of deep paranoia in Odog. Now, seeing Goldie as a risk and no longer helpful, Odog's paranoia led to a cruel decision. Goldie was found dead in an alley in Englewood. It was clear that being family meant nothing to Odog when it came to his fears and ruthless behavior. This brutal act showed the Vaughns and the rest of Goonie Boss just how heartless Odog was. His reign of terror aimed at enemies and every member of his gang was also under the dark cloud of his unpredictable anger. In Odog's world, loyalty and family connections meant nothing and were easily thrown away. The Vaughn family was hit hard again by another tragedy, the death of Robert Vaughn. They had faced pain before, but this loss was even more painful. The streets of Chicago, under the glow of streetlights, felt like a war zone where the scary noise of guns overtook the peaceful quiet of night. Another member of the Vaughn family was gone. Alex Vaughn was dealing with not just the pain of losing another brother, but also the harsh reality of being arrested. When he needed comfort and a chance to grieve, he found himself in handcuffs because he made the mistake of going to a shooting range, something he wasn't allowed to do as a felon. While Alex sat in the cold and unfriendly space of a police station, filled with sadness and anger, he started to rethink who he was loyal to. He was stuck behind bars, while Odog, who caused so much pain and fear, was still out there, free and unchallenged. This unfairness lit a fire inside Alex. Suddenly, Alex went from being part of the feared Goonie boss to someone who talked to the police. Every word he spoke to them was a mix of releasing his pent-up feelings and feeling like he was betraying his own. Once locked away, the Goonie boss's secrets were now out in the open. All the horrible things Odog did, which used to be hidden in the dark parts of Englewood, were now being looked at closely by the law. For Alex, deciding to talk wasn't easy. Alex Vaughn's internal world was a battleground, racked by conflicting loyalties and haunting memories. The death of his brother Robert was a shattering blow, and behind bars, Alex was cornered by his own conscience. The cold, stark walls of the jail cell were silent witnesses to his nightly battles with his demons. Every gunshot that Odog fired not only echoed in the streets of Englewood, but also resounded in the corridors of Alex's mind. He was haunted by the lives lost, faces that appeared in his dreams, and voices that echoed accusations of complicity. Every shadow seemed to whisper the names of friends and foes alike, fallen in the relentless gang warfare. Yet amongst these shadows of torment, memories of a different time, echoes of laughter and music, of bonds forged not in crime but in brotherhood. There was a ghost of another Alex, a young boy with dreams untainted by the streak of gang violence, aspirations that were buried under the ruthless reign of Odog and the Goonie boss. The death of Robert wasn't just another casualty of war, it was a catalyst, a stark revelation of the abyss into which Alex had fallen. Behind bars amidst the cold solitude, Alex found himself at a crossroads. Loyalty to the Goonie boss to Odog was pitted against loyalty to his family, to the memory of Robert and to the lives shattered by the gang's reign of terror. Each night in jail, the walls closed in, and with them, the reality of the path he'd walked. The ghost of the boy who once dreamt of music and unity haunted the man who'd become a soldier in Odog's army of terror. One fateful night, amidst the torment and the haunting echoes of lives lost, something within Alex stirred. It was a realization, profound and shattering. He was a prisoner, not of the jail that held him, but of the choices that led him to the dark paths of the Goonie boss. Odog's voice, once a clarion call to power and dominance, now echoed with the sinister tones of manipulation and betrayal. The Goonie boss, a brotherhood, had become a prison, and every act of violence, a chain binding him to a legacy of terror. As the dawn pierced through the jail's bars, illuminating the cold cell, a revelation dawned upon Alex. Freedom wasn't just a release from jail, 
It was liberation from the chains of complicity, silence, and fear. It was a journey back to the ghost of the boy with dreams, the echoes of music and unity, the paths untainted by the bloodshed. In this moment of revelation, amidst the intertwining shadows of torment and awakening, the seeds of betrayal were sown. Yet this betrayal was not just of the Goonie boss, but a betrayal of the silence that made him a prisoner of his own choices. As he ventured into this daunting path of revelation, Alex was not alone. The ghost of the boy with dreams, the echoes of another life, walked with him. The journey to become a witness against the Goonie boss was a pilgrimage, not just towards justice for the lives lost, but redemption for the soul, ensnared in the battleground of conflicting loyalties and haunting memories. The reign of terror unleashed by Odog and the Goonie boss didn't just leave marks on the streets of the Englewood community. It seeped into the lives of every resident. The echoes of gunshots weren't mere sounds, but reminders of the menace that lurked around every corner. The violence that was normalized for the gang members was a haunting nightmare for the community, turning homes into prisons and neighborhoods into war zones. Children in Englewood grew up with a knowledge far beyond their tender age. They learned the sounds of gunshots before they could fully grasp the alphabet. Every life claimed by the Goonie boss marked a family forever marred by loss, an empty classroom seat, and a future forever unfulfilled. Odog's name evoked more than fear. It was synonymous with the grief and anguish that hung heavily over Englewood. Yet amidst this overwhelming despair, there were sparks of resilience. Life in Englewood wasn't defined solely by the Goonie boss's tyranny. There were stories of hope and defiance in the quiet corners where the gang's shadows didn't reach. Weary yet unbowed residents strived to reclaim the narrative of their beloved neighborhood. Every bullet fired by Odog and his gang was met with the silent, indomitable spirit of a community refusing to be broken. The world outside Englewood wasn't blind to its sufferings. There were efforts to stem the tide of violence, initiatives born from the realization that the gunshots echoing in the streets of Englewood were cries for help that couldn't be ignored. Nonprofit organizations, community leaders, and even former gang members stood on the front lines of this silent war. They were armed not with weapons, but with education, outreach programs, and an unwavering belief in the potential for transformation. Every life claimed by the Goonie boss and every act of terror orchestrated by Odog sparked an opposing force of resilience. Englewood was a community marred by violence but defined by its indomitable spirit. Each mural painted on the walls served as a canvas of defiance. Every community outreach program was a testament to the neighborhood's refusal to be defined by its darkest chapters. In the aftermath of the Goonie boss's reign, Englewood stood not as a monument of terror, but as a testament to the undying human spirit. It bore its scars with grace, a community marked by violence yet defined by resilience. The narrative of Englewood wasn't written by Odog's bullets, but by the silent, persistent stories of hope and defiance that echoed louder than any gunshot. Every alleyway that witnessed violence also bore testament to acts of kindness and courage that defied the narrative of terror. Englewood, in its silence, narrated a tale not of subjugation, but of defiance. The law was closing in on the Goonie boss, thanks to Alex Vaughn's painful but necessary decision to share their secrets. His detailed information paved the way for law enforcement to build a strong RICO case against the gang. It was a comprehensive legal approach designed to uproot organized criminal gangs. And now, it was zeroing in on the Goonie boss. This was the beginning of their downfall, a change spurred by the combination of Alex's insider information and law enforcement's determination to end the reign of terror. Meanwhile, the Chicago police were becoming increasingly aware of the chaos and violence that seemed to follow Odog. They started to study the pattern, looking closely at crime rates and violence in the city, and the connection to Odog was too significant to ignore. Every time Odog was in town, crime spiked. The streets of Chicago, particularly Englewood, became more dangerous, echoing with the sounds of violence and fear. And when he was gone, a noticeable dip in crime followed. It was a pattern too consistent to be a coincidence. Odog was not just a member of the Goonie boss, he was a catalyst of crime, a storm that brought chaos wherever he went. This revelation, backed by concrete data and stark figures, accelerated the legal proceedings against the gang. The police were now armed with not just the testimonies and insider information provided by Alex, but also a solid set of data linking Odog and the Goonie boss to the heightened crime rates. The net was closing in. A legal hammer was poised to strike, and the hour of reckoning for the Goonie boss, particularly Odog, the Chirac hitman who had spread terror in Chicago for years, was imminent. Every piece of evidence, data, 
and every testimony was a nail in the coffin of the Goonie boss's reign of terror. The takedown was not just inevitable, it was necessary to restore peace in the streets of Chicago. The streets of Chicago bore silent witness as the empire of terror built by the Goonie boss crumbled. Alex Vaughn's testimony was a potent weapon that pierced the dark heart of the gang, marking the beginning of the end of their reign. For Alex, this act of betrayal was a painful yet necessary journey from the dark alleys of crime to the hopeful path of redemption. Odog's reign of terror may have ended, but its echoes still reverberate through the streets of Englewood, a ghostly presence, a haunting reminder of a time when fear and violence were the norm. His brutal and ruthless actions left an indelible mark not just on the landscape, but in the hearts of those who endured his terror. Families torn apart by the indiscriminate hail of bullets continue to navigate through the void left by lost loved ones. Every street corner and alleyway seemed to whisper tales of a time when Odog's name instilled fear, and every footstep echoed with the anxiety of encountering the infamous Goonie Boss hitman. Years have passed, yet the memories remain vivid for those who lived in the shadows of Dog's reign. They're etched into the very soul of Englewood, an indomitable echo that has defied the passage of time. Children now grown bear the psychological imprints, stories of loss and terror interwoven into the narrative of their lives. Every act of violence, every life taken continues to live on. A chilling testament to a time when Odog's name and the terror it embodied was the haunting lullaby that serenaded Englewood to sleep. The ghost of his reign, though belonging to the past, casts a long, ominous shadow that still touches the present. The tale of the Goonie Boss and Odog serves as a harsh reminder of the potent influence of the company one keeps and the choices one makes. Goonie Boss, which started as a group about community and music, will now always be remembered for the fear and violence they brought, their legacy marked by guns and loss, not music and creativity. The fall of Odog and the Goonie Boss marked not the end, but a new beginning for Englewood. As the dawn of accountability rose, it illuminated the darkest corners of the streets where fear once lurked. Yet, with the gang's disbandment, an eerie silence took its place. A silence filled not with peace, but with the haunting echoes of trauma. Each resident bore invisible scars, reminders of when violence was the order of the day. Englewood, though liberated, was a battleground stained with the memories of loss. The physical departure of Odog and his gang did not immediately erase the terror they had ingrained in the community's hearts. Yet amidst this pain, the spirit of Englewood proved indomitable. Residents now sowed hope in every corner where the Goonie boss once peddled fear. The same streets that once echoed with gunshots began to resonate with the harmonious buzz of community, unity, and rebirth. Englewood was down, but not out. Community leaders, families, and even former gang members who had escaped the clutches of that life came together. Every painted mural, every planted tree stood as a testament to their unyielding spirit, a narrative of rebirth woven in the heart of a community that refused to be defined by its past. Alex Vaughn's testimony had been a catalyst, but the true transformation was ignited by the collective effort of Englewood's residents. Schools, once underfunded and ignored, started receiving support from local initiatives. Nonprofits and volunteers flooded Englewood, their hands extended not in charity but in partnership. Education programs targeting the youth emerged, aiming to divert the new generation from the path that had consumed Odog and many others. A narrative of empowerment replaced the rhetoric of violence. Children, once hostages to the echoes of gunshots, now danced to the rhythmic beats of community drums. They were the heralds of a new Englewood, one defined by hope and potential, not fear. As years unfolded, a new narrative was etched into the soul of Englewood. Odog's reign became a distant memory, a stark reminder of a path the community vowed never to tread again. Every anniversary of the takedown of the Goonie boss was marked not with the echo of pain, but the celebration of victory. Victory over terror, victory over fear, and most profoundly, victory over a history that sought to define the future. A narrative of gain counteracted every story of loss. For every young soul lost to the bullets of the Goonie boss, ten more emerged, not as statistics of violence, but as heralds of change. Englewood's youth were its most potent arsenal against the haunting past. Each graduate, each young leader, and each community initiative marked a nail in the coffin of the terror that Odog and the Goonie boss had instilled. The future awaits Englewood's streets, once a canvas of terror, are now painted a masterpiece of resilience. The narrative was no longer about the Goonie boss. It was about a community that stared into the abyss of terror and emerged, not broken, but fortified. The story was no longer about Odog's nightmarish reign, but Englewood's silent, indomitable march from the shackles of fear to the liberating echelons of hope and renewal. 
The future was a narrative yet to be fully written, but every stroke of the brush, every note of the harmonious melodies of unity, and every echo of laughter from the children playing fearlessly in the parks laid the foundation of an Englewood reborn. Odog was a chapter closed, and a new narrative of hope, resilience, and unyielding unity emerged in the echoing silence of his fall. The tale of Englewood was no longer penned in the ink of terror, but scripted with the indelible marks of a community's unyielding spirit. Where once darkness reigned, now light permeated. And in the unfolding chapters of this narrative, the world would bear witness to a community not defined by its past, but by its unwavering stride into a future where hope isn't just seen, it is vibrantly, resoundingly lived. Fade out to the sounds of children's laughter and uplifting music, a stark, hopeful contrast to the somber tones that began this tale. The screen fades to black, but the echoes of renewal and hope linger, a poignant reminder of Englewood's silent, unyielding victory.